Let's talk about wind. The Eva Creek Wind Farm just finished its fourth year of operation and continues to perform as we expected. One of our turbines did have a problem and was only operating at 25% of its capacity for four months due to a crack in the gearbox. These photos were taken two weeks ago when the gearbox was replaced. Fortunately, we have a contract with the vendor, kind of like an extended warranty, so our members won't bear the cost of this repair. Um, I'll tell you that um, having to bring a crane across the river, it took six railroad cars for the crane, it took two cranes actually, um, it was quite a project um, and Sevian did a great job with it. Now Golden Valley has been approached by two other wind producers to take more power. Golden Valley wants to be a green cooperative. So Cook Inlet Region's Fire Island Phase 2 wind project is in the looking glass and so is the Delta Wind Farm. But as you may have read in the paper, GVA considered both the benefits and costs associated with the interconnection of the proposed, proposed Delta Wind Farm project and filed a notice of denial for interconnection with the Regulatory Commission of Alaska because we believe adding Delta Wind Farm's 13 and a half megawatts would cause our fuel costs to rise $19 million in 2018. A recent order issued by the Commission requires Golden Valley to reassess its filing. They deemed our filing void, which means they will treat it as never filed, and they've given us some guidance on what they want in the new filing that is due May 12. I am certain that dialogue and communication and going back and forth is going to lead us to the right decision in this matter. If we can bring on Delta Wind Farm, so that it does not economically harm our members, we're all for it. Someone's got to show us the numbers. Someone's got to show us we're wrong. We're looking for that opportunity. But the folks at Siri with Fire Island 2 Wind recognize that GVA could not afford to regulate their wind project and has been working with the Anchorage utilities to provide this service. That's so GVA's fuel costs will not skyrocket if we procure their wind for our system. Most people think wind power is the cheapest, greenest power we generate at Golden Valley Electric Association. But if wind power is not carefully balanced with other power sources, it can actually drive up your electric bill and our emissions. At this time, every megawatt of wind power we generate requires an oil power plant to be running in the background. Our oil fire units are the only ones that can react fast enough to match the changing output of the wind turbines. Coal-fired plants and our purchased natural gas can't react quickly enough. The gas turbines in Anchorage could react quickly enough, but we have to purchase that power a day ahead so those utilities can schedule gas through their utilities and schedule their space in the pipelines for the gas. Oil is more expensive than coal and natural gas, and burning oil is one of the hidden costs, both economic and environmental, of wind power for Golden Valley. The bottom line is adding a 13 and a half megawatt wind power project in our system would increase our fuel and maintenance costs, jeopardize our reliability, and might actually increase our fossil fuel emissions. Now we understand people disagree with that, and again, as I told you, we're open to listen to what they have to say. Cook Inlet Region's wind project would be backed up by the Alaska Southern Utilities, which would reduce the impacts to our system. That's why we're in serious discussions with Siri. We're very interested in renewable energy. And there is another green power project that has gotten the green light from the Board of Directors. It's a solar demonstration project to be built in South Fairbanks this summer. Here's Golden Valley's Pete Mondelli to tell us more. We are planning to build a half a megawatt solar array. This project will be the largest solar array in the state. It'll be built between Van Horn Road and this, the fence line here. It's, it's quite a ways away, but it'll still be visible. The size will be a two and a half acre footprint with 1,600 panels oriented to the south with, with um, one inverter per four panels. The genesis of the project was, uh, first we looked at a community solar project. We, we talked to two different vendors, but it also turned out to be too cost prohibitive right now. So then the, the board of directors in conjunction with our CEO, Corey Borgeson, decided to do a Golden Valley 
uh, sponsored uh, solar array. It's, it's being titled a demonstration project to see how it uh, reacts with our system and what uh, the cost will be to maintain it. And as the price of solar panels comes down, we hope to look at doing something along the lines of a community solar in the future. Community solar is a concept that's taken the wings in the lower 48 and is a lot of a very popular in that if you cannot put something on your roof, you have too many trees, you live in an apartment, you can buy shares in a solar array. So you're, you uh, would benefit, that would be applied as a credit to your, your the cost of your power. Even though we don't get a lot of sun in the winter, the, uh, the weather and light data shows that it is still advantageous to do this. There is a lot of interest in the community for solar and we're trying to, to, to prove that it is a valid concept up here in the north. We've been planning this project for about 18 months and we hope to, uh, to continue with that and, and get it built by the end of the summer. Let's see. You know, we heard from a number of members last year that they really wanted us to, to work on solar, and we did it. Uh, we listened. Um, as we go across uh, the country and, and attend uh, electric utility programs, this is not just here in Fairbanks. Members are asking for solar all over the United States. Um, so I'm glad that we came to this point. It's a half a megawatt uh, solar panel. Uh, system that we were going to put in. We sized it smaller. There are many people that would like to have that what we call the community solar where, as Pete explained, you can buy in and put your money in and invest in it and get a return on it as well. So we wanted to make sure that there's an opportunity for a solar project. We weren't going to preclude it by doing too big of a demonstration project. Um, you know, I, I've always told everyone the key word in community solar project is community. Anybody out there that wants to do a community solar project, put it together and bring it to us. We're more than happy to work with it. Uh, we've actually been contacted by somebody out in Salcha that wants to put in a one megawatt solar farm. So um, we're very excited about that. But I also want to tell you that I think we've got a solar community here, and we call them our SNAP producers. Uh, these are folks that come to Golden Valley and want to put some type of renewable system in their homes or around their house. Um, most of them are solar. There's a few wind turbines. Um, and out in the room, we had um, Alvin and Micheline Patterson who were in our, in our booth to, um, explaining how their solar array worked. Uh, they had put an 8 kilowatt solar array on their home, and they answered many questions. I had a wonderful time visiting with them tonight. Currently, GVA, GVA has 165 members participating in our SNAP program, and I would call that a community solar group. So let's give them a hand.